to stay
We've had a week of very exciting cup action, but now it's time to turn our attention back to the bread and butter of the league. Jacko takes the addicts up to crew, knowing that quite simply we must get three points if we are to get towards the playoffs come the end of the season. Lots coming up in tonight's show. We'll speak exclusively, as always, to Johnny Jackson. And also defender Sam Lavelle, who's fit again after surgery. We'll look back at Sunday's impressive performance in the FA Cup against Premier League side Norwich. So unlucky, weren't we? And we'll discuss a touching moment that took place before kickoff. Now, Curbs is in St. Lucian, and why wouldn't you be in January? So Stevie Brown's alongside me here in the Charlton TV studio, presented by DNEL. And as it is January, we've made a new signing. Robinson is going to aim for that fast stick once again. Yowds is spotting the target, and Yowds in the target, and Yowds gets in there, and Eddie Yowds has scored his first goal for Charlton Athletic. Had a run, it was Tyler who went up there. This is Yowds, and it's a goal for Charlton. And the Forest defence stood absolutely still, and Eddie Yowds has put him ahead on five minutes. One of these uh, throws. Yowds. Oh, and he squeezed it in, Eddie Yowds. And Charlton are level. A very warm welcome to Charlton TV, Eddie Yowds. I mean. I some finishes there. How are Can't you? Can't believe it. With the left how are you not a striker? Done? I don't know, Scott. Uh, yeah, I was impressed with that myself. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly enjoyed watching it. Have you been able to see much of Charlton this season? I think you were here seen, for the, the Donny game, weren't you? Seen a couple of times. Yeah, I was there for. I think we won four. Was it four 0 or five 0 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen that one. I was well impressed with them that day. Yeah, we, we we did have a good performance there. And you're looking forward as well to being alongside your, your former teammate and see roommate Brownie. as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, great to see him, he hasn't changed a bit. No. <laughs> he was messy <laughs> back then, wasn't yeah. he? <laughs> oh, so he's coming, uh, how smart is he today? Are you, are you surprised? I you? was shocked, yeah. I was right. expecting a right slob to come through the door. Like I've always been like it. Beautiful. It. You're damn right. <laughs> so first, Graeme Stewart, now Yaldi as well. Are we mm. contracted to bring in your former roomies here or what? No, no we weren't roomies. No, oh, okay. we, no, no, we weren't roomies. He was just... Player that knocked me out the side again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Anyone that comes in knocks me out the team, though, so that's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that just a little bit later on. But look, on a more serious note, though, Brownie, and looking at today, just just how important is it that we get all three points? Yeah, right? really important. Yeah, I think I think we found ourselves at the back end of November with two away games on the bounce, and we really needed four points from the pair. And we thought if we could get six, we could really start looking up, mm. and four would be the minimum. We end up getting one. We were 2 0 up at Morecambe, pegged back, and then we lost at Shrewsbury. I think these two games coming up, if we've got any aspirations of making the playoffs, we have to get six points. Well, we'll come on to team selection in just a second, but we, we, let's, it's fair to say we haven't got a, a full strength 11 at the moment. But after that performance against Norwich, confidence should be pretty high? Definitely buoyed by the performance, yeah. I, I can't. I was here Sunday, mm. and, and Norwich were extremely poor. They made a lot of changes. And we've had this argument many, many times about match sharpness for players that haven't played on a regular basis. They're nowhere near as sharp. Their brains aren't working as quick as players that are playing regular first-team football. And that was definitely noticeable Sunday. Yes, we played well. We should have gone through. Mm. We didn't. But this is back to league football where crew, uh, they've just been beat quite heavily at home. Probably going to expect a reaction. They're all match sharp. It's a different prospect tonight. But Yaldi, if we want to finish in the top six, we've got to be beating a team that's in the you bottom four. You expect to be through tonight, and uh, as Steve said, you know they uh, they've just come off. Of, I think they've conceded eight goals in the last two games yeah. through, so they're going to be wanting to tighten up their defence. They've always been uh, a football inside crew over the years, but you need to get really in amongst them and set the tone from from the start, from the first minute to stop them playing. So they do, even though they I think they've conceded the second most in the, in the league. They always play nice football and they dominate possession in a, a lot of the matches. Um, so I think when we start bright and we get amongst them, get an early goal, we should have a good night tonight. Are you feeling under pressure? Yaldi's yeah, done his homework. No, I never feel under pressure like that. Sure? I've got so much in the locker. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what they come with, does it? it just, I'm, Graham Shaw sure tried to locker, do it the other day, didn't he? He tried to do it the other day with his coaching. Oh, just leave it out, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. Remember, we are streaming worldwide tonight. That does include the UK and Ireland. So if you haven't yet got your match pass, 
please do so as soon as you possibly can. Let's get cracking. Let's hear from Johnny Jackson, who spoke to Charlton TV a little earlier. Jacko, here at Crew Alexandria this evening, back in league action. You must be raring to get back into the nitty-gritty of the bread and butter of the Sky Bet League One. Yeah, yeah, important that we get back on, on it uh, with our league, uh, league matters now. Uh, I need to start picking up points in the league. Good distraction of um, two cup games there, one in the uh, Papa John's that we managed to get through and uh, obviously put up a, a really good shine against Premier League Norwich in the FA Cup, but this is our bread and butter, as, as, you, as you rightly say, and we need to get, sort of get back to winning ways now in the league. A couple of changes made from the, the game against Norwich on Sunday. But first of all, Hendo in goal again today. Uh, but I guess it's for a good reason as far as Craig McGivery goes. Yeah, yeah, Macca travelled up with us, but he, um, he had to shoot off uh, last night because his wife's gone into labour. Um, so obviously, you know, it's, some things are more important than football, aren't they? He, uh, he needs to be with her and uh, he needs to be there for the birth. So we wish him, uh, well, all of them, all the best with that. Uh, no news as far as a baby yet. But um, yeah, we're watching that one closely. But yeah. Uh, no qualms about putting Hendo in. Done, thought he'd done great again on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, Hendo comes in for Macca. And a couple of changes, as we mentioned. Nakin Fanway is back in. And uh, real positive news, Connor Washington, after missing out last week, is back today. I mean, how's Z fair as far as two games coming up in three days? Yeah, obviously going to have to manage that situation. Look at him carefully tonight. Don't want to uh, risk him and lose him for any longer uh, period because he's a key player for us and uh, we miss him when he's not there. So we're really pleased that he's available for this evening. Um, but yeah, we'll have to, you know, we we'll have to see uh, how long how long he can play tonight, and then uh, one on Saturday as well. As we said, it's only been two league games uh, since you know before Christmas with that Plymouth game, the Wickham game, New Year's Day, as we mentioned. Um, how desperate are you just to, to get back to winning ways and to just to get that monkey off your back? Because it's you know a month since we we've had that last win at home. Yeah, I'm desperate to get uh, the three points here. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity for us. And saying to the lads there, we need to turn sort of the dominance that we've had in. In, uh, in games into victories now. Uh, there's no point in me standing here again with you after saying that we played well and we dominated but we didn't win. So uh, we need to turn that dominance into, into three points and that's what we'll be aiming to do tonight. We say it every time we go to these midweek away games and on Saturday as well, but there'll be about 300 Charlton fans here today over on that far side. Uh, it's freezing cold. Uh, it's a long way on a Wednesday as well, so it's a little bit different to a normal midweeker. Um, great support from them again. Absolutely. Incredible support, as always, uh, the way that they follow us up and down the country. We've had a few tricky ones, haven't we, this season? And they seem to you know, have all come uh, when it's been a little bit chilly out as well. So can't, can't thank them enough again for their support. And good luck tonight, Jacko. Thank you. Well, at firstly, and most importantly, we wish uh, Maka and his wife all the very best with the imminent birth. Uh, on his birthday today as well. Quite incredible, isn't it? Brownie, you must have been given paternity leave by, uh, mate, by Curbs. He said some things are more important than football, he said there, didn't he? Not to Curbs, mate. Phoned in on a Friday. Man, he's gone into labour, Curbs. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Call him all, that the way up, all the way here. Sat on the bench, didn't get on. Drove all the way back. Thankfully, she hadn't given birth. He... Sunday was the day he came, George. But uh, yeah, it, it's just times have changed as we were talking about it, weren't we? You know, some managers are like Johnny, go home, don't miss the birth of your child. I think Others, most are now, to be fair. Yeah, yeah I think you have to be now. That's I, I think society that says that you go to the birth of your child now, but back then you didn't. They're all a bit different, aren't we? I mean, we had our kids late. I would have definitely been playing if I'd have had the choice. Would you? Well, I wasn't delivering the baby, so I would have definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have definitely played. <laughs> let's, have a, let's have a look at the team, shall we? Because uh, Stephen Henderson is in goal, which, of course, he is a, an able deputy of that, there's no doubt. Two changes from the, the Norwich game uh, Sunday. Akin in for Ryan and Connor for Mesa. I mean, look, Brandy, I mean, Jaden's a blow, isn't it? We don't quite know when he's going to be right, but it's pretty important that Connor's back, isn't it? Oh, 100%, yeah. I mean, you would have called those two changes. Um, in terms of Ryan, I thought he did very well on Sunday. Great to see him back. He's been out a long while. He now want to stay as fit as he can and push him for a new contract in the summer. And he actually played really well. Mm. But, you know, that's 70 minutes in, what, three or four months. So it's only right that Akin comes back in. Does he have to be managed for the next three or four weeks? Or at what point do you say we can go 90 minutes and, and even a midweek as well? Uh, that's a very good question because everybody's different, aren't they? Like, you could have probably gone straight back in. Richard Roof was the same. Richard yeah. Roof was missed eight, nine months straight back in the team and it didn't affect him at all. I missed two weeks of, of football and I was, mm. you know, needed a week to get back into things. So I would say when you've had that spell out for that length of time and it's not the first time, he had, he had problems last year, he needs a bit of managing. Mm. So, uh, but when, this, this, is, this has become a part of football in, in modern day. Where is that match fitness coming from? Because I just... 
23s is not where you can get really match sharp. The clue's in the match fitness, isn't it? It's, it's, but it's, yeah, it's, I, it's I understand first it, team. but, but first the old team. reserve team, you must have yeah, played in yeah. the old reserve football. It's, it, it is a difficult one. Yeah, it's yeah. a difficult one. But, um, you know, as you say, with the likes of Richard Rufus, he was a, he was a natural at that. It's, mm. you know, and, it, it's just, and it's age as well, and it's how you man-manage players. Yeah. You know, if you're going to give them rest from training, you know, certain players that only train once a week and then they'd be ready for the game. So it's, it's, it's important. It is indeed, but it looks a, a strong 11 for this evening. Let's have a look at the league table, shall we? Unfortunately, we have to look at the bottom half because that is where we are after recent results and also recent postponed fixtures. We're, we're 14th, 29 points. 11 above tonight's opponent's crew, or second bottom. Cheltenham, who we play on Saturday, are one place above us. And Brownie, I mean, you've touched on it already here, but, but two games against teams in the bottom half in the next few days. How vital is this week going to be? I mean, I might even be half empty if we don't get six right. points which, out of six. Which tells you a story, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at that table and I'm saying if you don't get at least four points we will start looking over our shoulder again, which we wouldn't... Oh, no. I'm telling know. you now. I am that. telling you now, 23 to 29, if we don't pick up something tonight against Crew, we should be beating 18 points from 24 games. We should be beating Crew, And Cheltenham have been on a... Yeah, that, listen, I don't look. think that's going to happen. It's momentum in yeah. football. I think we'll win tonight and we'll have that momentum. We'll take it into the next two, two games. I think they've got to be pushing for the playoffs. Yeah. You know, and win tonight, win the next one, and that, you know, we'll be on the fringe of it. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of the playoffs. I'm not having that in terms of looking over a shoulder for possible relegation. But let's move no, no, on. No, to... I don't mean relegation, but you're 14 from sixth and sixth from the bottom four. You don't get anything out of these next two. They're, that gap's getting tighter. So you don't, what, what I'm saying to you is you can't say if we lose both that you're not going to be slightly looking down at Morecambe on 23 points yeah, if we lose the next two. What's more negative than glass half empty? <laughs> <laughs> I think what is clear, these games, these games, although true, are struggling. They're not easy games. No. You know, we'll expect to win it. But they're not easy. They're never easy. You've got to you've got to earn the right to win these yeah, games. Absolutely. And, and do you know what, Brownie, you, you, you're not wrong. Let's have a look at the top half then, shall we? Uh, top two sit on 50 points. That's Rotherham and Sunderland. Big surprise. Sunderland lost at home to Lincoln last night. Lincoln's Chris Maguire certainly had a bit of fun, <laughs> didn't he? Um, Oxford are sixth. They're on 43 points. They're 14 ahead of us. Your maths is good, Brownie. Uh, we've got a game in hand on them, but not on Plymouth, who are on the, the same points as Carl Robinson's side. Yeah, see, it is a fairly big deficit to, to kind of catch up on. So that's, what, what would be your approach? It is. You've just got to be positive. And momentum is everything in football. You get two wins on the spin, and then you feel like you, you know, you're invincible. Mm. And I think Charlton will get a good win tonight. I really do. I think mm. the, if they approach the game the correct way, which they will, um, get off to a good start. Um, they're going to be lacking in confidence, as I say. They've conceded eight goals in the last two games, so you've got to be you've got to be out at the the start really, really quickly, um, and and press them high up the pitch. Yeah. Because they play good football, crew. They always have done. Yeah. Portsmouth in eighth. They're unbeaten in five. Ipswich are tenth, and Accrington eleventh. Both unbeaten in four. You, you had a spell at Ipswich, didn't you? Do you, do you still yeah. keep an eye out? Yeah, I, funny enough, I got invited to uh, batter the players do in uh, March today. So whether I go back and see them, uh, I, no, I don't keep it. It's difficult. Uh, that was 20 years ago. Um, remember, it was great days, lovely football club. John Walk's still there, I think. Simon Milton, another good mate. Um, but no, I, I mean, I might go up there and see them uh, in March, but it's a, it's a club that should be you know, the certainly championship level. Mm. OK, we are the only fixture in League One this evening, so let's get to club news now, shall we? And it seems a long time since we've done it, so there's a lot to catch up on. Ticket news first and seats for our next home fixture against Fleetwood Town are still on sale. We want to fill the valley again, so invite your family, friends, neighbours, and let's get this place rocking like before. Tickets for the match are priced from £18 for adults, and you can get yours by heading to booking.cafc. .co.uk. Streaming news now and a reminder that you can watch tonight's game live on Charlton TV anywhere in the world. That includes the UK and Ireland. So if you're watching us on social media and haven't got your match pass yet, then you can get yours right now from cafc.co.uk for just a tenner. Saturday's game, though, against Cheltenham will only be available to live stream outside of the UK and Ireland, and that is due to EFL broadcasting rules.
Cup news next, and we may have exited the FA Cup on Sunday, but we're now only two matches from Wembley in the Papa John's Trophy. The draw for the quarterfinals took place on Thursday morning. Distance-wise, it probably couldn't have got any worse. We've been drawn away to Hartlepool, and the tie will take place on Tuesday, January the 25th, and we'll kick off at 7 p.m. GMT. I can confirm that we'll be streaming the game live on Charlton TV all over the world. Save your petrol. Watch the comfort from your own home. That's what we say here on Charlton TV. Now, international news next, and we said that we'd get Mark Fish on, and we are going to get him on. Our former defender will be joining me, Curbs, and Mervyn Day via Zoom when we host Fleetwood on Saturday, January the 22nd. Promises to be a cracker, and if you're an international fan, you can purchase your live stream match pass for the Fleetwood game right now. Last week, Karen Hills made her first signing of the January transfer window with young fullback Georgia Fox joining on loan from Chelsea from one great club to another. And Georgia made her debut in Sunday's hard-fought draw against Sheffield United at the Oakwood. The Addicts were the better side for much of the game. But how about that for a save from goalkeeper Eartha Cummins in the 88th minute? Not bad that, Brownie, eh? Very good. You wouldn't have got that. Oh, no, I, I would have held that. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. It's very similar to a Steve Gritt save, actually. A gritty save, mm, yeah. And you made no. one like that. I Eartha, country. well done, preserving the, the clean sheet. Karen Hills' his addicts are back at the Oakwood this coming Sunday when they host Lewis in the FA Women's Championship. And fans will be able to watch that game live on Charlton TV. Finally, Anthony Hayes' under-23 side staged a stunning second-half comeback at the Den on Monday afternoon to come from 2-0 down to beat Millwall 3-2. A neat penalty and then a, a free kick from Aaron Henry. You're not having the keeper there, Brownie, are you? You can see you laughing at the side there. Before <laughs> striker Daniel Carnu bagged the winner four minutes from time. Good run and finish that. Great, great running behind. Yeah, love to see those runs turning the back four around. And he I found with a superb pass. Yeah, I still think the keeper could have come out for that one. Yeah, Got much time. I know, I know. Ball over the top, <laughs> centre half not being in the right place. Yeah. Heard that before somewhere. Done off the shoulder. <laughs> Right, OK, following a, a three-month layoff, it was great to see defender Sam Lavelle back in that game. And he spoke to Charlton TV after the match as well. Going up to three months now, I think about 10, 11 weeks it's been, so it's gone quick in some ways. Um, but yeah, it felt, felt good to be out there today. Didn't feel too bad fitness-wise, to be honest. I've uh, been training quite hard this week, um, but yeah, felt really good to be back out there. 2-0 up at half time, and the, but the boys came back 3-2 second half, yeah. Um, some good performances. First time I've, I've been involved with the 23s and seen a few of the lads and yeah, some good plays in there. I'm not really prone to injury. Um, I think it's been a good two and a half years with, without being injured. So um, yeah, it's something I had to get used to. Um, but I'm, I think I'm experienced enough to know that you've got to keep yourself busy at, at these times. Um, so I did that off the pitch. But yeah, it's been tough at times watching the boys do so well. Um, Obviously, you want, to, you want to be part of that, and it's been tough when they, when they get beat as well. Because you, you want to obviously help them out on the pitch. So, yeah, I've um, kept my head down, done things right off the pitch, and, and, and got back there now, which is which feels good. The lads have been doing really well. Um, it's great to see. We, we, we turned a, a massive corner, I think, when Jacko stepped in, um, and I was loving watching it. And I, yeah, the, the, the lads were, were filling me with confidence and, and filling the, the club with confidence, really. So I'm, I'm hoping to be part of that as soon as possible, but. I'm obviously I'm, I'm wise enough to know that the lads have been doing really well, so I'll buy my time. I'm looking forward to seeing sort of training with Jacko full time now. I've, I've done it for this week. Um, had half an hour at Sunderland away with him and his style of play, which which I like and all the boys like. Um, so yeah, I'm raring to go with Jacko and hopefully I can uh, get back in the team soon. The fitness will come. I don't feel too far behind if I'm honest. So. Um, I'll keep doing things right and, and wait for my chance again, but yeah, felt good today. Brownie is, 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 a, is a good young pro and he still is young, we, we can't forget it. And actually he came at a time where it was difficult to play in the first team under Nigel at that particular moment. So great to see him back now, isn't it? Yeah, good timing as well. You know, we're going into the back half of the season, we've been missing, you know, we've been filling in centre-half, haven't we, in terms of Sean Clare dropping in. Great to see Ryan back, great to see Sam back. Mm. You know, that's, that's a good 45 minutes under the belt. He'll progress, he'll play again, I would have thought, next week, the week after. Um, yeah, and I like what he came with in terms of his attitude towards defending in his own box. You know, he wasn't afraid to put his head in and, and make a block. 
um, yeah, and, and he did come at a very difficult time where we mm. were struggling. So I think the best is, is yet to come. I think mm. we'll see him get stronger and stronger as time goes by. Yeah. You, you mentioned it. There's him there. There's, there's Ryan. Yep. Uh, there's Akin, obviously. I mean, Sean Clare's done fantastic as Brilliant. well. We're suddenly yeah. looking really strong in that centre back department now. Aren't we? Yeah, I think I think I've read a couple of times. Oh, we need to strengthen the centre half. Absolutely not. No, you know, no chance. That's, that's, as well. Yeah, that's a very uh, in in terms of what we have coming back. Um, it, it'll make us very very strong. Um, in some respects, you feel a bit for Sean Clare because when they're back, you've got to imagine that he's going to probably pop out the side at some point. Do you think he will? Well, it'd be a tough it'd be a tough one because he's been exceptional. Yeah. You know, I, I said when he dropped back in there, we all thought Dobson was going to drop back in there. It would have been a natural selection choice, sitting centre and midfield, to pop him back in the centre half. And when Sean Clare got named there, we sort of went, oh, OK, let's see how he does. He's been brilliant. It'll, mm. it'll be harsh if, you know, in a month's time, when they're both sort of coming to full fitness, we'll see what the decision is. But it'll be harsh if he comes out of the team. Yeah, how do you sort of see it? If someone's playing out of position but doing so well, do, do they stay in that position? Or someone like Sam or Ryan who's the, a... The difficulty is, if you don't win, if you win and they do well, then you'd expect to stay in the team. If they do well but they lose, which we have done, we've lost 1-0, I think, the last two, then the, the natural centre-back usually comes in and mm. takes the position back. There's a set piece thing in there as well. So Sam scored a couple of goals. There's one thing that we haven't done particularly yeah. well this year. We haven't pitched up goals from anywhere else yeah. in the team. Yeah. You know, and, and Ryan's good in both boxes in that respect. So Sam popped up with a couple of goals this year. We, we, we touched on Ryan um, about what, sort of a long layoff as well. The Sam there. So what, what were you like uh, after a, a long layoff? I mean, I, well, I, I, must... I mean, I had terrible injuries. I mean, you know, that was what finished my career, yeah. my knee. Um, and I had a, a spell where I was out for 18 months. So it was a little bit different than me and Alpha for four or five weeks yeah, um, and that's when it, it's very very difficult but I think um, with your, maybe he's match fit and he, he's sharp and he's doing well and he, as Brownie said he pops up with a couple of goals he, you know it's, it's very good for Charlton's squad and we'll, we'll definitely need him. Mm. Okay are you ready to go down memory lane? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> this is always my favourite bit I have to say especially yeah. with someone like Brownie alongside you as well so he's going to chip in here. Tell us about how Curbs convinced you to sign what was it about March 98? It was March 98 and I'd come down from Bradford um, as soon as he took me to the, you know, we went to the Sparrows Lane and seen the training ground. I knew I wanted to be at Charlton. Um, it wasn't a difficult decision to make um, and I loved it as soon as I arrived. I had a great time. I met the players in the first day of training and we had a brilliant squad. We had a fantastic team spirit and I think that's what, what you know, brought us through to mm. promotion. We kept a record 13 clean sheets when I arrived. Um, I'm not saying it was down to me. <laughs> now we'll come on to that in just a second, uh, but clearly... But it, it, was, it was the team spirit that we had, and it was from the start. We, you know, really fantastic set of group of lads, yeah. and probably in my career the best set of lads that I'd played with, I've okay. got to say. That's, that's fair play. What were you like when you heard that a centre-half was coming in? Oh, listen, it, it, it was that day I woke up, there was a day I woke up, Charlton signed two players, centre-half and a right-back. Cheers, Kurt. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Just the clearly, holding midfielder clearly as well. Clearly, it wasn't doing very well again, Scotty. <laughs> but yeah, no. I, I think I think what it did signal, though, was that was the first time really that we'd made a push. It was March time, wasn't it? Yeah. We'd yeah. made a push in March to sign players. We'd always been on the back foot financially, and it was the first time that we'd been able to push forward and sign players to go strong at the end. Mm. And it made a massive difference. Yeah, they. Came, I mean, Sasha came in as well. Uh, he did, we didn't buy him, and he was one of those ones that he literally walked in the training ground yeah, yeah, of his own yeah. accord, joined in training. Amazing, really. It would never um, happen. Unbelievable. Now. It would never happen. Unbelievable. And Sasha played. Eddie went in. Millsy went in at right back, and we went on this phenomenal run. Well, it, it was it, 10, 10, 12 clean sheets. It, it was it was a four-two victory against Nottingham Forest on your debut. Uh, nine clean sheets. I'm I'm being yeah, told. I, yeah. Um, Eight of those wins, which saw us reach the playoff final. I mean, listen, we can talk about how, how much of an impact you must have made, because that is some impact. It is. I mean, look, uh, we defended well as a team. and, and don't, don't give it that it, sort of team team. Yeah, but, uh, it was you. It was you. <laughs> it yeah. was me, yeah. It was that. <laughs> no, I mean, Cave set us up. I heard um, Jermaine Defoe talking about David Moyes the other day, funny enough, how they, uh, how they used to walk through the training exercise and his attention to detail. And Curves was exactly the same. You both know that. Yeah. And we, I think it was on a Friday, well, either Thursday or Friday, we'd walk through exactly what the opposition would do. And it got, at times, if I'm honest, it was a little bit boring sometimes. Yeah. It was an hour long yeah. of we'd walk through, it was walk and football. But then on the Saturday, 
situations that occur and uh, and they'd happen that you'd done the day before and you could react to it and you knew it was coming. So it was a, his attention to detail was brilliant. Curb's clearly ahead of his time. I agree, definitely. <laughs> well, we always talk about the excitement of the playoff final and, and the attacking part of the game as well. But it was it was one nil at half time, and on course for what the tenth clean sheet. What happened in the second half? Well, I thought, I mean, it was my fault for the equalising goal when Quiddy scored that near post header. Um, but we automatically thought when we went 1 0 in a half time, that's it, we're done with in the Premier League. And, you know, look, looking back now in hindsight, I'm glad it happened like yeah. it did because it's uh, an epic Iconic game. game. That it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the time, it was horrible to be involved. What was it like? Tell us. Horrible. Horrible. Do you remember what Curb said at half time as well? And, and, and just tell us the feeling because when the goal started flying in, did at any point you think this isn't going to be our day? Yeah, I mean, we've yeah, blown it. Of course, especially that they they were favourites to win. They had a you know, brilliant strike force. Um, we had obviously we had super climb, didn't we? And we had Brownie's crunch and tackle, which I think we've know, heard yeah, about we, it. Honestly, uh, <laughs> we've heard about it a million <laughs> times. I don't like to talk about it, but people like you always bring it up. Yeah, it it yeah. takes me back to it. I mean, I seen that game the other day, and I seen that tackle. That tackle, this day and age, that would have yeah, been blown up. It wouldn't yeah. have been allowed. No, no. It, it'd probably been a yellow card to be honest. I, I say but yellow. It was, a, it was a brilliant tackle. Brilliant crunching tackle. Yeah. I have to say, I, and I, I hate have to say, it, I hate saying it. But. Yeah, I don't remember what Curb said at half time, and I normally remember stuff like that, and I can't remember what he said at all. But I do know that we felt very confident yeah, yeah, when we went one yeah, nil up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had no I idea I, what was coming. I I remember him telling me recently that he said, look, just keep it tight and counter-attack and we all kind of got them. And then it was like, bang, bang, we're 2-1 down. Yeah, I know I know. he said he got back to his seat and within, what, 10 minutes we were 2-1 yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, we, we talked about the penalties a million times. We talked about Brandy's tackle two million times. So I want to talk about the after party. Oh, OK, <laughs> so we understand that the players stitched someone up with a hefty bill. Can you shed any light on that at all? Well, what happened, believe it or not, even though we've got promotion to the Premier League, it was worth £45 million pounds at the club, it wasn't a free bar. So it got to about 12 o'clock. That's outrageous. It's, it's outrageous. There's still about 10 of us still up. And one of the young lads could do <laughs> Curbs' know. signature. So I'd said, to the, I'd said to one of the hotel staff, can we order, what's the most expensive bottle of champagne you do? He said, Krug, it was 375 quid a bottle, I think. So I said, well, can we order 14 bottles of it? <laughs> So we got 14 <laughs> bottles of Krug champagne. This, I forget who it was now. He signed Kerbs' signature. Who Kerbs had gone to bed at 10 o'clock with a ham sandwich and a glass of milk. And he woke up to a four and a half round bill, which he paid fair play to Kerbs. He paid it. Um, but it was funny. I mean, it was, you know, it was one of them times that you, you have to do it. You, you can hear him now, can't you, Kerbs? <laughs> Don't get up here when you're doing well. Don't be down here when you're not doing well. See you in the morning, 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> just watch just one promotion at Premier League. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> And then um, in August, um, we literally got told what kind of cancer it was. And at that point, it kind of come about that he was going to a Cholton game. And it was, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how it got into that bit that he kind of met Jake. And it kind of went from there that Tracy got to know Ben. Um, she's been following Ben's story. She contacts my husband, who I've just been keeping her in the loop. And then, obviously, she arranged for us to go in a box with some of his friends. And then, because Ben <clears throat> hasn't been very well re recently, and now we've been told that the chemo isn't working, um, and we've got to move on to another plan B, um, that's when she kind of set up for Ben to come down here and do this. He just absolutely loves Cheltenham. Loves it. <laughs> Football is his, abs is his world, is his whole passion. So to be here watching the football, he feels like he's taking part in it and he's fulfilling his dream as well. It's just, for me, it's all about just keeping him happy and keeping the memory alive. That's what we're trying to do. It's all thanks to Charlton. It was good watching the keepers up close, especially being a keeper myself, listening to some of the stuff that the um, coach had to say. It was good watching them pull off some amazing saves and uh, watching the players at the end do training, playing a match. That was good.
Yeah, it's a great family club, and I don't think um, second to none really, and it's so, especially what they've been doing for Ben, it's been fantastic. So, just want to thank everyone for that. So, brilliant. <laughs> All of this, the Cholton family, it's it's amazing. They've really come through for Ben, really come through, and that's what it's for me. It's just the what's doing to me, it just puts a, a great big smile on his face, and that's what he needs because he is going through a really, really tough time and he does have to fight. Cholton, I tell you what, they have pulled out all the stops for him, and that I say I am so grateful, so grateful. Wow! Well, Curb, Matty Holland, and myself had the pleasure of meeting Ben and his family at the uh, Ipswich game. It was, I mean, what a brave young man he really is. And you were here on Sunday as well, yeah. Brownie. I mean, it was a very touching moment, wasn't it? Extremely, yeah. And and it it it's what football clubs can do you know it's the least we can do isn't it is offer opportunities and it's such a sad you know set of circumstances but yeah it was very emotional mm. just before we move on everyone here at Charlton TV wishing Ben and his family all the very best okay let's have a look back at Sunday's game now shall we and look Brandon, I mean we talked about it you being here and it was a reasonably impressive performance and yeah. Norwich were Pretty poor, I think it has to be said. But there was a lot to be encouraged about, wasn't there? Yeah, well, tackles like that. Mm. Actually, too many of them to the pound, to be fair. And seeing him get up. Yeah, and he struggled. He caught his knee in the turf, as you can see from the divot. But mm. this is inches wide. Crawl's beaten all ends up here, you know. And it's a different story if that flies in the back of the net. But it's kind of, you know, the, the tale of the afternoon. We, we had multiple opportunities and couldn't take any. And as the game went on and Norwich made the change, they really were poor first 45. We had to take advantage of of their poor performance and moments like that. And we created three or four very good openings yeah. and, and couldn't take them. And actually, you know, that, that's what cost us ultimately uh, the final whistle. You know, that is a foul. That was all, that's always going to get given in modern day football. But um, in, in regards to when they made their three subs, you could see they were starting to come. They still weren't great, but they were starting to come back into the game. You know, that's a really good save from Crawlow down on his right. Well, that's a good leg. But, yeah, um, yeah, in your playing days, would you have relished to get a game like this, being the underdog? Of course, yeah. Um, and like Brownie says, you've just got to take your chances. And if one of them had gone in, it yeah. would have been a different game. You know, all the reports suggest that Charlton should have won the match, and it's um, it's just the the FA Cup. These, you know, you you see a lot of surprises go in. This wouldn't have been a massive surprise if we'd have beat them, although they're Premier a Premiership club. I think Charlton, the way they, they approached the game on Saturday, you know, by all accounts, we should have we should have been in the next round. Mm. Jacko said afterwards, if, if his players maintain that, or they've set the standard of terms of performance, and if they carry on playing like that, we've got a good set of players, we've got a good squad, who knows what can happen? I agree to some, some extent, because the performances have been... That means you don't? Well, no, because they, they've <laughs> warranted more points than we've got. I know. But we are struggling to score goals. You can't get away from that. You know, if you take Connor and and, and Jay, do you think if, equation, if both of those were playing, we'd we'd have won I, that I, game? I, do you know? What? I don't I don't like that sort of question you've because just got to start because you in. just don't know. Yeah, we got you've got to chip the, in throughout the, the, the whole the whole team. It can't just be down to the strikers as well. The centre backs haven't scored many goals this season. Yeah. So you know, it's got to be throughout the whole team. The last the last person to score a league goal other than Jaden and 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 Connor was was Gilby against Ipswich. Mm. That's a long time ago. Mm. You know, and, and we've got to find a way of scoring more goals from different areas in the pitch. Yeah. Let's have a, a reminder of the team then, shall we? Our team up at Crew, it is two changes. Stephen Henderson keeps his place in goal. Craig McGivery again, his wife is very imminent in terms of giving birth. We wish them all the very best. But Akin comes back in, so too does Kono. And then let's, let's carry on that theme of scoring because th that is our problem at the moment, Brownie, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it must be extremely frustrating for Johnny because the, you go back to the Wiccan performance, we should not have lost the Wiccan game. You know, and they're a side fighting for promotion. They're a mm. good, strong outfit. 
And I thought we were the better side on the day, but we struggled to break them down. They were compact behind the ball, and we, we, we run out of ideas a little bit, didn't we? Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is a different game. I, I think this is one we should be steamrolling. Eddie said earlier, we've got to start fast. We've got to make sure. The one thing about crew sides is they're not particularly physical, mm. right? And the only time I've seen them dominate us was when we stood off them, and that was here. Um, if we can get on the front foot and, and pressurise high up the pitch and, and, and be a little bit physical and get in amongst them, I, I, you know, they, they've struggled in. They've made multiple changes tonight. Yeah, uh, our, our midfield is important though, isn't it, with, with Alex, George and Elliot? Yeah, you know, we've said this before in terms about the balance of that midfield. It's very, very good. I thought George Dobson actually in the first half hour on Sunday was exceptional mm. in terms of breaking up play. Uh, Elliot found a little bit of form on Sunday as well. He had a couple of great opportunities. He was getting in much better attacking positions. And Alex, we know, comes with that energy. I just love him to pitch him with a few more goals or a few more assists. Yeah. Let's have a look at crew. As you say, it's, uh, it's a few changes, three changes in, in total. And I mean, Yaldi's absolutely spot on, conceded eight goals in the last two games. So, you know, this is all about ours, isn't it? It is. Um, and what crew do well is pass the ball and keep possession. What they don't do well is the ugly side of the game. And that's why we've got to be on the front foot at the start and, uh, and press them high and, um, you know, get in their faces, really. Michael Mandarin, their top scorer, has got just two penalties in the last 13 league appearances. No goal from open play since September the 21st. So they're struggling for goals as well. Absolutely, and their points per game total is, is, is why they're where they are. It's, mm. it's awful. Um, you know, even sometimes you look at a team that's struggling in relegation, the away form is dreadful and the home form is not bad. That's not the case with Crew. Their home form is not great either. Mm. You know, so they really are a team on the back foot. And, you know, we've already said this, but. This is a three-pointer for me. Saturday's slightly more different. I think that's a tougher prospect. But this one, we've got to get on the front foot, be, be dominant and get three points. Do you miss it, Yazi? Uh, yeah, of course. Always miss it. Miss the, you know, the, never forget the, the memories. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm 18 stone now, Scott. I can't play. I'd love to. <laughs> You're still a stone lighter than that. No, I'm only joking. Oh, only joking. So, look, OK, well... <laughs> I won't ask for a prediction because obviously we're going to say we're going to win. But in terms of getting that win, who's key for you tonight? I, listen, I, I think in terms of... Or what's key? What's, what's key is creating the same opportunities we created Sunday. You've got to make sure that you create the opportunity to give those players an opportunity to get us in the lead. I think if we take the lead here, I think we're, we're good to go. Mm. I think the only, the only way this could become tricky is if they get the lead uh, and the confidence is knocked a little bit. But I, I think in terms of... Uh, you, you've got to make sure that Connor stretches their back line nice and early. That allows uh, that allows a little bit more space in midfield, or should do for Elliot, I think, is, is, is quite key to getting into the game. I think if Elliot gets into the game, he can create as well as score. He needs to pitch in with more goals. He's better than two goals since he's turned up. Yeah. You know, that, that, that return isn't good enough, and he knows that. Same with Alex. You know, but we've got to, we've got to make sure that the football maintain, we, they maintain the same standard as Sunday, finish off the opportunities we've made. Well, that seems a long time ago since the last league match, doesn't it? And even longer since we've got a, a league win. But quite simply, we are getting to the point where, certainly games like this anyway, we need to come away with all three points. Let's get to our commentary team now, shall we? Terry Smith and the, uh, the legend that is Peter Shirtliff. Thank you, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, uh, Stevie. And uh, I should say thank you, Eddie, 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 because he's, uh, he's the only man who, uh, who's, whose name suits being called it three times. Uh, it's a bit <laughs> like Beetlejuice, Eddie has. Uh, alongside me this evening, you're very welcome, by the way, to the Moorflake Stadium, yeah, uh, formerly known as Gressley Road, of course. And alongside me, I've got Cap 